Hola, boa noite. Munson here from expatsportugal.com with The Portugal Show. We do this on a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday evening. Special guest tonight. Really looking forward to this. I have uh, Julian Sorison waiting for me from uh, Lisboa, car free in the green room. He is just munching on the virtual canapes there. And we're going to have a great chat about how to enjoy Lisbon using public transport and how to live there without a car, which is a pretty smart move, I think. Uh, before we do that, um, let's have a look at the weather. It's a bit, <laughs> it's pretty much gloom and doom. I, I, I do feel it necessary to talk to you about uh, Storm Barbara or Depression Barbara, as she's been called, and the Reuters news today with the COVID figures in Portugal passing 100,000. So let's do that and get that out of the way. Yeah, the COVID numbers, according to Reuters tonight, uh, Portugal's COVID-19 cases passed 100,000. This is a Yahoo News Reuters story uh, from today. And um, yeah, makes for pretty miserable reading, of course, but uh, just keeping you up to date with what's going on. There is, a, a, I guess, what can be reframed as good news in there. Um, at a stretch, uh, Lisbon, Dateline Lisbon, Portugal's coronavirus passed or well, the cases passed 100,000 today, Monday, with nearly 2,000 new infections in the past 24 hours. Days after tough new measures to contain the disease came into force. Everyone's tiredness is legitimate, but it cannot legitimise failure. The Secretary of State for Health, Antonio Salas, told a news conference, we continue to depend on each other and our success is the success of Portugal. The nation of just over 10 million people initially won praise for its quick response to the pandemic. Absolutely right, too. Uh, it has recorded a comparatively low 101, 860,000 confirmed coronavirus cases and 2,198 deaths. <coughs> Excuse me. But like in most European countries, infections have risen again. On Friday, Portugal hit 2,608 cases, the highest single day figure since the pandemic started, although testing has also increased. Gatherings are now limited to five people. Weddings can be attended by a maximum of 50. University parties are banned and there are heav heavier penalties for rule breaking establishments. Authorities have repeatedly said it would be unbearable for countries' economies to shut down again, as happened during a six week lockdown here in March. We are trying at all costs not to implement confinement, Salish said. Prime Minister Antonio Costa warned last week that the government was not afraid of further restrictions if the spread of the outbreak did not slow. So that's the gist of it. We know what we're up against there. And uh, what can we do? Fingers crossed and, and hope for the breast, hope for the breast, hope for the best and um, follow the measures. And yeah, just yes, seriously, what else can we do uh, apart from um, keep everything crossed for that? Uh, quickly now, the weather. Uh, let's have a look at our expats portugal.com Portugal weather pages and uh, what is barbara doing to us at the moment i'll tell you we are seeing in lisbon tonight it's raining and i'm sure um, julian will be able to confirm that 18 degrees and raining 64 fahrenheit and look at that four more days of rain to come with temperatures in the capital ranging between 18 and 20 degrees rain often brings milder weather of course porto Five days straight of rain, brightening up at the weekend. We have a consolation prize of 17 degrees on Saturday. That's the forecast anyway. Coimbra, 18 degrees and raining right now. Four days of rain and even in Faro, four days of rain. Uh, and that's looking set to continue to when it brightens up on Friday and Saturday at 20 degrees. Actually, a nice looking weekend there. We'll soon put that behind us. And we need it for those reservoirs, don't we? Uh, this uh rainfall but uh, just keep you in the picture there i hope that you've battened down the hatches and you're safe and warm and maybe tonight you have if you are in portugal you have lit the fire for the first time and you've got the, the lovely smell of wood smoke that we get in uh, autumn here in portugal a uh, few hellos to uh to, to share with you but not until we welcome julian onto the screen good evening to you sir how are you good evening how are you doing thanks for having Hello. me cole Appreciate nice. you. Pleasure. As soon as I saw what you were doing, I thought I've got to get this man onto the yeah. onto the show and talk about it because um, I, I try to live car free myself. I hire a car occasionally, and we we positioned ourselves as a family close to a railway station and on the edge of a town, so we can keep car use down to a minimum. I'm not virtue. I'm trying not to virtue signal. You know, <laughs> people think you got to have a car sometimes, don't you? But I think it's great if everyone has a little bit of a go at uh, maybe minimizing their dependency. Um, because actually, I was looking at the news. 
the oil production of Portugal has been shut down in Matosinhos, isn't it? Or laid off for a little while. And there is concern about um, oil consumption. So actually, it's quite a good preemptive move to yeah. release your grip on the motor vehicle. Yeah, well planned, yeah. Uh, it was all inspired by the Matosinhos oil incident, honestly. But, uh, we saw this coming, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. No, but like you say, absolutely, it has a big environmental part of it, part to it. Um, at the same time, I think it's it's quite, uh, with Lisbon Car Free, uh, for those of you who don't know about it, uh, the idea behind it is that um, I've created an Instagram page for people who don't have a car or don't want to have a car or don't want to have to travel by car everywhere to get to all the best places in the region. So indeed, showing everyone exactly how they can do that with the most amazing public transport system I've ever seen in, in the Lisbon area, whether by bus or boat or train, it's um, it's always possible. And it's also fun and it's got an environmental aspect to it. But indeed, it's also uh, a good laugh um, trying to find your way to different places in the in the random corners of Portugal as well. Yes, I've been there. I know the experience you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's it's a, and a, a, like it all started from a weekend adventure. Me and my friend uh, Abdullah, and we used to go on these crazy adventures. And we thought, God, this is we can just. It became more and more difficult, and we were like, this is probably easy level. This is probably very hard level. And then I thought, I'd be a quite a like, good idea for a page. And then it just kind of the more the more you, I think we were just talking about that before the show, Carl. The more you discover in your area, the more you look into different towns and places. You, you the more and more you discover, and the places becomes bigger and bigger and it feels like it's an infinite number of places you can visit um it just makes it more exciting yeah you there it is it. oh you've you're, got it well oh. mate, i have to show people this page because here we are on instagram Lisboa underscore car free it is absolutely beautiful so it's absolutely right with that we're not finger wagging and and sort of being down on car use we're showing you or, or, or julian is anyway the alternative getting around on public transport having an adventure and just scrolling through your beautiful Instagram page here, Thank all these you. amazing experiences you can have. I mean, and these are all what with within spitting distance of Lisbon, are they? Yeah. Oh, I mean, this is all quite recent as well. I mean, I started this in July, um, so just a few months, um, but it's doing pretty well. Uh, get a lot of messages, <laughs> people yeah. saying thanks, thank God. Um, they are, yeah, absolutely. Um, anything, anything from like I, think I made a post that evening, probably the shortest one I've ever done, is twenty-five minutes, um, up to two, two and a half hours. Um, I, I, I try to break down every post. So if you, if you look at one of the, click one of the beautiful photos, you'll have tell you well, exactly tell you which, how, one. Which, which one yeah. would you like to have a look at? Oh, let's go on. Let's go on. Go, go up. Keep going to, for example, the one that says Kai Beng. That's quite a popular one. Uh, up, oh, going yeah, up, okay. up uh, this one well, here in the orange. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. Okay. Yeah. Um, we kind of found that just by, uh, by just taking a random, uh, bus and then walking around and then we found this random village called um Cova do Vapor on the uh the Caparique coast. I know Carl used to live quite close to there in the past. Yeah. Um, right at the tip there. And it's uh, we're just walking through and we and, uh, we got the bus a couple of buses and we came out this sandy little resort town, a tiny little village. Uh, and we came across all these signs that said everywhere, oh ah Kai Beng. And I said, what the hell what in what on earth is is, uh, is Kai Beng, and it turned out to be this Caipirinha cocktail that only exists in this Ooh. one little paradise, as you can see. Oh, um, no. and, it, and it was absolutely amazing. And I just, and I just thought that's absolutely amazing because no one's heard about this unless you've ever been to this little tiny village, which is I don't know how many people live there, maybe a thousand. You've never tried this drink, and it's absolutely amazing. And this is just—I mean, we just we discover so many places. And if you see, like, uh, kind of breaking it down, I've, I kind of give the the directions how you get there. Um, also kind of break it down like a, an orange, green, red kind of signaling how difficult it is. So this is medium level, um, travel time an hour and five minutes. And then also kind of tells you kind of what f for fans of different things. And then oh. the exact buses and trains and um, you need to get as well. That way, if you ever stop for weekend inspiration or what have you, then you can, you can fly through all these things and um, get some inspiration and know exactly how to get there as well. Oh, look, while, I, while I'm here, I'm just going to like that. <laughs> That's an extra oh, Appreciate that, Carl. Thanks. This, this is so beautiful. And what I would invite people to do, I'm going to stick the link to the, your Instagram page now in the comments. And maybe what we can do, we can take requests, can't we? So if people post back the link they want to know more about, you they, you could talk us through it, right? Because we could just come back. And, Absolutely. And, right. I know them all at the back of my hand. Do you? So, they, this is fantastic. I, I okay, think so. Let's say hello to a few people. Benoit from North Carolina, from Laurel and Andrew, 
Uh, I've been keeping a little bit of an eye on your wedding preparations. I'm not a stalker. I, they have invited me to be their friend on Facebook. So it looks like your plans are going well there, Andrew and Lauren. Fantastic. Uh, from Charlotte, yay! From uh, North Carolina as well, Philip Gilbert. Uh, from Natalie, Bonoit from uh, Natalie and Vitor. Mark, who I was talking to earlier on, and really keen to get you on the show at some point, Mark. Greetings from South Sea in the UK. When I moved to Pavor de Vajim, I will probably eventually visit Lisbon by train. Knowing, however, to get around on public transport will make it far more interesting. You have come to the right place tonight, Mark, for, for sure. Um, nice, says um, Carlos Gonçalves. Uh, what kind of software uh, do you use for this uh, for these lives? Oh, I see. For the, well, we're using StreamYard. We're using StreamYard, Carlos. And isn't it great that I can share Julian's pictures like I've been doing? Uh, Sean is here as well. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Shauna, Shauna Hyder. Can't wait till I get to Portugal from Texas. And of course, the time we go out uh, in the evening here, we are talking to a lot of transatlantic friends, people who are interested in coming to Portugal. We are so going to whet your appetite tonight. And Eugene's here. So great to be in your company in the expat man cave on Friday night. Hola. How easy is it to access car hire when you are further inland? Any recommendations? I will get back to that. Eugene, we'll take that in tonight as well. Um, I don't know if that's part of your game plan, though, um, uh, Julian, with car hire. Do you tend car to stick hire. to public To be transport? honest, this is like originally all inspired by the fact that I can't drive. So um, Needs I'm much. not a big car hire expert. Um, but, of course, I mean, uh, like he, he was saying there, it's, uh, if you live further away or you're inland and you're kind of – it, then I, I don't really know the ins and outs for how good the tra public transport is, but I know in the Lisbon area it's it's excellent. Um, yeah. You can find your way around. So I'm sure I mean, you can you can always find a way of, of getting around, but I don't know how simple it is outside the Lisbon capital region. Well, it just so happens that I do, and I'll come back to that later, Eugene. Oh, so you're not going to eclipse the talent that's here tonight in the in the shape of Julian. Can we get a bit of backstory before we get? We're going to have a nice sort of leisurely chat. Would love people to uh, pop in the particular links from that uh, Instagram page. Then we could talk about them in more detail. But it's all great right. to set the scene. You know, it's it's all about being a visitor and, and making a new life in Portugal. What's your story? How did you come to be here in the first place? Oh, been there for a while now. Um, about. Just over three years, um, I'd, I'd, so I just I think I was in a bar once years ago, and uh, someone mentioned to me, uh, I thought it was in Berlin where I used to live, and uh, someone mentioned me to, to me that Lisbon was their favourite city in the world, and they mentioned all the fishing villages you can get to actually by bus. <laughs> uh, maybe that was in my head, um, in thirty minutes or what have you. And I just started thinking, oh, I never really thought about Lisbon before. And then uh, I looked into it, and then I just kind of just had this little rush of endorphins and thought, that's my place. When I in a couple, and then I went 100. And that's and I just and I, people didn't think I was going to move. And then maybe a couple of years went by, and um, one day that was it. And then I moved here, got a job on my first day. I got here, and it was really kind of made me realize that um, that's it was meant to be. You know, you know, I put all my eggs in this basket, and um, I'm happy I did. And now I own a house here, and. Oh man, I'm a what? full on, full on Portuguese expat. <laughs> That's not leaving anywhere. So, yeah. What a lovely story. Because I, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Didn't know what your backstory was. And it's like the streets are paved with gold for you. The well, rush yeah. and then the job on the first day. What's your secret? Yeah. Well, I'm a big believer in that. If you, if you kind of want something to happen, or if you kind of, if you've got very uh, positivity breeds positivity, right? And if you really yeah. want something, and if you really want to find a job and a place and have the life, then. Um, then kind of luck will, will fall for you. Um, I think I was very lucky, to be honest, probably a bit more than the luck just falling for me. But, um, you know, it's meant to be. Fate. Super. So, Super absolutely lovely. love. I'm in love with the country. It's nothing nothing bad to say about it. And Lisbon's my my home. So, absolutely. And are you, are you being paid by the Portuguese government yet? Mm, not yet. No, no, no. Yeah, that's coming. That's, it's, uh, it's certainly yeah, that's all in the grand plan, you know. So... <laughs> Quite rightly too. Yeah. So where, where did you end up? What was your first um, stopping point or base camp for you? Lisbon. Yeah, it, it was in Lisbon. You, you came. Yeah, through. it was my. It was the Intendent Martin Minish area on the, on the green green line in uh, in Lisbon, and then now I moved a bit further away to a place called Pontinha, which is kind of on the edge of um, which um, where I am now, uh, on the edge of Lisbon city. Okay. Um, but um, always been Lisbon. Uh, I, I would say I know the region pretty well now, just because I travel around so much in it. It's just full of so many amazing things, but uh, it's just really one of the things. I think uh, people are always kind of, you know, it's always attracted by the sim similar things. I think the hot weather and the beaches, but also the food and the drink and just the the culture. You know, 
I kind of struggle when I go back to England now to visit my family. I just think, oh, oh God, I just I feel like a foreigner in England now, even though I'm really? not, my Portuguese isn't amazing. If I go back to England now, I just, I mean, I just don't know exactly. I don't. I, I walk into a supermarket and I go, "Good morning," and you don't say that when you go into a supermarket, like you do Bong Dia, for example, in um, in Portugal. So it's always people think, "Oh, it's a strange guy. He speaks in an English accent, but he, he seems to be away. Seems to be a bit lost." So um, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. You, know, you said you lived in Martin Muniz. Um, we mm. are you familiar with the legend there that, that the man yeah. who was he threw himself in the door of the castle so that his his fellow warriors could get in and and, and rout the the invading force who were occupied in the actually I don't know if they're an invading force but they 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 they'd occupied the castle and he's supposed to have thrown his body. It was the Moors, wasn't it? I think the, the Moors. Moors. Yeah, the Moors yeah. are in the castle for sure. But we debunked that last week. That story. He died. The guy actually Martin Muniz. Turns out it's fake news. He died eight years before that battle. Oh, you know that's fake. It's it's. <laughs> I, I used to live with a tour guide, and he wow. used to, he owned a tour guide company and yeah. in Lisbon, and, and he told me about that. And it's they they love telling that to, to tourists walking around because it's it's romantic. <laughs> it's you know the the Moors are holding onto the the castle, and then the the Christian Portuguese army march in, take Portugal back, um, and then the doors are closing on the Portuguese Christian army. Uh, no more Portugal uh, as we know it now. And then he jumps in, blocks the door from closing. He crushes himself to death and the whole Portuguese army storm in and Portugal yeah. is saved. But like in reality, he probably died from cholera eight years earlier. No, that's right. But you knew that. You weren't impressed when you first heard that by the sound of it. No, I know. Well, I, in the, the interesting thing, if anyone ever listening or you, Carl, like, um, ever goes to me uh, the metro station of Martin Minish, underneath you, you've got all these... Uh, You've, you've got like uh, what would you say like all, all these kind of drawing like sculptures on the on the walls of the Martin Minish metro station and yeah. there's all different knights um and different people with shields and, and swords like reenacting I guess some kind of war scene and then right in the corner if you go right to the corner you see this one person trapped between a door yeah. and that's Martin Minish that's just kind of hidden in the corner it's kind of a tourist site these days yes, indeed. Yeah. legend the legend that is so let, maybe we shouldn't make too much of that and let people let people believe yeah, don't debunk that one it's nice it's been taught on the on the portuguese history curriculum for decades yeah, so, no. um, yeah. Uh, well, well, it, people will always deny it they'll, they'll probably debunk your debunking you know so that's the uh, age we live in isn't it? That's it. <laughs> Hola, that from is. um, austin texas area linda Good evening to you. Great to have your company. Chris Roberts. Hola, Botar. This is a great idea, even for tourists. Good thinking. Uh, that's aimed at you there, Julian. Thanks, Chris. Um, I love the Ericera region, says Doug. Good evening to you, Doug. Uh, we've got getting getting uh, personal now. My uncle has his business in Pontinia. Love going there for lunch. Is it legendary lunches there, by the sound of it? Oh, I'm struggling for lunch spots in Pontinia, so I want to know where that where that is, to be honest. That's, uh... All right. Anna Lucia, yeah. we'll sort that out before the end of the okay. show. Maybe better get you a, a special book in, in there. <laughs> yeah, you know, out, so. out the back, not where the tourists eat, but out the back. Yeah, that's uh, it. Spent a lot of time in Mafra, says Doug, so he knows your area too by the Mafra's sound of it. Mafra's good. Mafra's really nice. And Mafra's one of those regions, actually. There's many, yeah, people mentioning Arisera and Mafra. Well, Mafra's part of it. Uh, Eroso is part of the Mafra region, but you have like lots of regions like this, kind of a little bit further north of, of Lisbon, but still kind of within the Lisbon travel card region. I mean, like Mafra is a region, people know Mafra, they may not know Eroso, but outside that, there's a huge like number of areas of kind of waterfalls and, and great hills and, and, and walks. And like we've found some amazing wildlife nature parks in that area, really wild places, like really wild. Like some real, I saw a mongoose there the other day, um, just <laughs> walking around. Um, we we have to get into this. We got because I there's, I don't know quite where to start because your smorgasbord of an Instagram there has so many beautiful pictures. So maybe, maybe, I'm, I'm Danish, so thanks for using the word smorgasbord. Right. Well, you said before, I, I really love Danish culture. You said your name had one of those O's with the cross through it, and I just think that is so stylish to be have a, have a surname with the O with the cross through it, which obviously has obviously has a Danish name. I don't I don't know what it is, but people think yeah. you've crossed the O out. You were saying, yeah. I mean, I love I like using it because it's kind of show offy and it makes you look like. Yeah. You're, you know, you're worldly and like mysterious with a cross to the O. But the, the, the reality is, if you kind of start putting a cross to the O on your like your bank statements or what have you, or your passport, or, or maybe not your passport, but everything else, then people just think you've made a mistake and crossed out the O. So instead of spelling your name S O R E N S E N, they spell it S R E N S E N, like or something ridiculous. And then all of a sudden, you have all these identity problems, and it's just not worth it. Oh dear. Okay. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. You, you, you would think we'd have grasped that by now, wouldn't you? After decades of the European project. But anyway, 
Um, so it maybe would. we should start with your first outing then. Uh, it, it's inspired by you needing to use public transport, basically, not, not being a car owner or, or even a driver. So what was, what was the first adventure or, or epic that, that you got involved in with this whole thing? And then when did the, the idea come about to make it into a fully formed thing like Lisboa Car 3? Well, yeah, well, it's, I guess it kind of, I used to do a lot of trips. Um, I got this, like I said, this friend, Abdullah, that we used to go to a lot of different trips. And, and the reason I got really, really started kicking off all these adventures, this was Lisbon. I don't know if you know much about it, but Lisbon kind of had this new initiative. A lot of people living in Lisbon area will know about this, um, of having a new travel card, which doesn't just cover Lisbon, but the metropolitan area. So when I mean that, that's like a huge area. It goes all the way down to Setúbal. It goes all the way up to Mafra, Reseira. It goes, it's a huge area, really, like almost two hours every way, um, uh, almost. Um, and, it's, uh, and it's called the Lisbon Navigante card. And it's, uh, it's 40 euros for a month for every boat, train, bus, uh, whatever, <laughs> scooter even. Really? Um, yeah, and it's unbelievable. Like it's um, a good value, and it was the government put it into place because they, you know, it, the house prices are going up. They want Portuguese people to be able to uh, live, work in Lisbon, uh, but afford rent, so they can give them the opportunity to live further away, but still be able to very much afford the travel. So they got this new forty-euro travel card, the Navaganta card, and then we started using it, and it just like magic. It's just like you go so far, like really, like you're going on a holiday to like these crazy, like faraway cities and towns and lakes and rivers and and oceans, and it's just this card, and it's, and it's always just forty euros a month, and every bus beeps, every boat beeps, it just you're, it is within your your magic Navaganta card, and so that's where we kind of got the passion for it. We even dressed up as one of those cards for Halloween last year because we're. A bit bonkers so um I but it, it was a it was a amazing uh, and then but, but then since then we've um we've kind of gone everywhere we've well, i think our, our kind of our first real crazy ones I think one of them we went to meckle beach in the south uh, in comporta which are really beaches really far away um you have to take like two like a train and then two buses and and then you have to walk and one of the times you have to walk like an hour and a half and that was a bit over the top, but we just thought, we started thinking, this is great. Can we do it in a day and get back in the same day? And then, then every day, every week, you try to make it, every weekend, you try to make it more extreme. So it's just, it's, it's a challenge. It's fun, you know, and it's I good com camaraderie with your friends as well. I can see how you've done that. It's almost like you're the guys at the all-you-can-eat restaurant who eventually get thrown out. And you're Honestly. trying to take this card to its absolute limit. I thought I had the card, and I'm holding it up in You've front of me. You've got it. That is the magic That's card, Carl. That is that's thing of beauty. Look at that. Yeah, it is green Gorgeous. normally because it's in front of the green screen. It's messing yeah. it up. But that is a, you're right. It is a thing of beauty. And it's so valuable, isn't it? I mean, 40 euros for all that, the value you get. Um, I think is extraordinary. And, and, you know, what I'm hearing there when you were giving your description is like you really can experience most kinds of uh, landscape and geography. You obviously go to the coast if you're in Lisbon, but you can go up, not in the mountains exactly, but maybe you can. I mean, you, you go up into very hilly altitudes, don't you? And like all of life is there on this one card. Absolutely. I mean, you can go to like uh, beach, beaches all over the place and maybe three, almost three different coasts. That are rocky to sandy. You can go to like yeah, really tall like uh, mountains, na nature reserves. You can go to some amazing small villages where you can find some amazing food and drink that you can't get anywhere else. You can, um, you can. There's you can go to the big bigger cities. You can. I mean, it's really uh, unending. I mean, it's, uh, different rivers. I mean, it's just. And the more I look, I bought a book recently called uh, I think it's Wild, some Wild something Wild living portugal or something like that that one of the instagram people recommended me because what happens is the more i do this the more people message me with recommendations and, and they send me this book and it's just a f hugely completely st stocked with different natural places lakes rivers oceans little villages you can go to in portugal and, and I, I haven't even touched the surface of that so i've got this huge list of places we need to go to every each weekend and i don't know how i'm going to get through all of them but it's uh, it's amazing so uh, let's let's go to some of your favorites in a minute. We'll go back to the Instagram page. But I mean, is, is this is this a job or is it still your hobby, basically? No, oh, it's a hobby. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's absolutely. A I'm a salesman by day. So. Oh, okay. Um, but um, no, absolutely. It's it's new car. I mean, it's in the in the long run. I'd I'd like to get, do something more out of it. Absolutely. But I, mean, I started this in July, so it's it's still pretty recent. But oh, it's wow. it's very popular, very popular for the time scale. Um, getting a lot of messages different offers of collaborations and that kind of thing. So we'll see how it goes. It always yeah. starts like this and hopefully 
Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. You absolutely deserve some, um, you know, local government support, I would say. Um, I use public transport whenever I stay in Sintra. Uh, an example there from Doug. Driving in Lisbon is stressful. It Actually, yeah, it can be. I think it's quite exciting as well. One rainy night, I went out with the family. and had a friend stay. And we were going up one of those very hilly um, streets, narrow, hilly streets. And um, my wife, she does get a bit sort of tense sometimes. Not, I don't think it's because of my driving. But there we were on this. Quite, there were some really steep hills you drive up in Portugal, in Lisbon. I mean, all over Portugal. Absolutely. Yeah, if you go out to the countryside, it gets really scary. But we were there we were on a rainy night. And I let the handbrake off on a hill start. And the wheels were spinning. And I couldn't for the life of me understand why. And I just thought, we are stuck here. All I can do is roll back. There's someone behind me. And then, mm -hmm. you know, like what happens in, in, in Lisbon, people are really kind and friendly. Someone walked over, knocked on the window and said, just like roll back a little bit. You're on a manhole cover. And the wheels were spinning on this like wet manhole cover. Just rolled back a little bit and drove off. But we, it, it, I could Some understand. Some pretty hairy moments. Yeah, absolutely. Hairy moments are plenty. So the public transport thing is good. Um, so let's go back to your, your page there. Um, and can you give us another highlight of, I mean, they, they all look like highlights, but wh where, where should it's we just, stop and have a little bit of a dive? There's just so many highlights. Okay, yeah, well, let's go on one of the more recent ones, it's just because it's fresh in the memory. So if you go to the top there, Carl, um, yeah. the top, right at the top. Ooh, uh, this, this, yeah, this, we found this, this here, this, that, exact, that's the one. Okay. Oh, my word. No, then, the, so the next, the, not that one, Carl, the one on the far right. That, that was, that's the fresh, fresh off the press. That was this uh -huh. afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, but, I, I, we can go with that, but this uh, on the on the, on the right, the furthest right, that, that that's it. That's the link. So, for example, this one here is one I got from that book because I had never. I think there's a lot of people have this idea that it's all oceans and the Lisbon area. You don't get many lakes. Um, yeah. I lived in Berlin before I lived here, and it was just full of lakes and uh, places to go. And I always thought there was one, and then I, I heard about this um, through this book, and it's just you have to really kind of get a train into the central region. And then you have to get a bus um, kind of out into the absolute middle of nowhere and kind of walk along a road for about half an hour into the kind of into the undergrowth. Um, but it's absolutely amazing. If you can click through the photos as well, uh, yeah, you yeah. can see that there's like it's uh, it's completely pure. Like there were tortoises or te I don't know, terrapins. I should know mm. that being a biologist, but terrapins uh, <laughs> swimming around in the water. Uh, absolutely beautiful wild wild lake. Um, there was almost completely deserted. Um, oh, an absolutely amazing find. And it's one of those things that I, I found as another lake really nearby. I didn't get a chance to go to that time, but just discovering and going around discovering, you just you just find more and more and more, uh, more and more places to discover. Um, that's, that was an amazing one. That was a couple of weeks ago. That is delightful. Yeah, um, pure, absolutely pure. I don't even know what, what, you know, many people know about it, but it's called Blue Lake, Lagoa Azul. Can you? Um, could you in there if you wanted to? Could you have a, have a dip? Yeah, I didn't. I mean, it was what October or something, uh, and it was uh, it wasn't the warmest day. Um, I mean, I could just to show I could, but um, I don't think I would um, <laughs> at this time of year. All right, fair enough. That is that is beautiful, really wonderful. Can can I twist your arm and have a look at the uh, seafood one as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. You know that, I just, I just that, posted that, it. Yeah. Is that where you've been this weekend? Yeah, uh, yesterday, 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 I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or Saturday. Yeah, that's that's the life, you know. That's how we live, you know. We, I was me and my girlfriend in this one. So, um, Nadia, she takes a lot of the uh, photos at the moment, and uh, she's a really good photographer. So, I use a lot of her photos as well. But this is, um, uh, yeah, this is the, this is, the, and again, another really small town. If you take the ferry across the river to a place called Trafaria, in on the south margin oh, yeah. of Lisbon. On the way, there's a town called, and this is kind of the class thing I like to do, Traffery, people know, and I have posted about that, and Traffery is a cool place to go. But on the way, the boat stops for a few seconds to a town called Porto Brandao, which people mm -hmm. just think, oh, that's just some little village, and why is the boat stopping here? So one day we thought, let's get off. And there's actually one of, the, uh, one of my Instagram followers that messaged me about it saying, actually, you should go to this little village because it's a, they have this great thing called, a, I don't even know how you pronounce it exactly, a, 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 cova, a covara, a, a a carvoda it's a cold grill um and this the way they do it is only in this little village called porto brandao here just on this little blue restaurant you're going to see in a second yeah. um and what they do they put out this big stove of uh, charcoal grill on your table and then they say do you want uh monk we had like monkfish and uh 
shrimp but you can always get like monkfish and like wild boar or something and it's really good value um, and then you, you actually just cook it yourself as you go along so you get all your your rice and your fries like you always do in portugal and your salad yeah. and uh, absolutely amazing uh, absolutely amazing culinary experience to be honest and just in this random village the only place to do it is in this little village that you have to get a boat to that's what it's all about yeah, I'm I'm familiar with that, I, you know, and I'd like to t- talk to you a little bit about that ferry experience because it would appear, <laughs> wouldn't it? That, you know, coming across from or to and fro from the north to the south, it looks like it's a commuter boat, doesn't it? A lot of workers live over on the north side, coming over to to uh, the the sorry on the south side, coming over to the north to work. And I lived on in Almada on the south, so I would get a train. Um, there's all sorts of ways I was doing it, but yeah, I get a bus. One one version was to get the bus to um, what's the um, what's the on the other side of Caixa de Sodre there? Um, that, Casillas. Casillas, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, you must have reported on Casillas in in, in the past, um, yeah. and the seafood restaurant there, the Farol. But I'm thinking, you know, yeah, it's, it's it's been tur- it's, it's been a bit swamped by tourists recently. For the oh, Farol, um, yeah. but yeah, I know that you have a um, Casillas is a great place to go for. For Ninja. seafood lunch, uh, absolutely amazing. But the ferry experience as well—that's a really good thing for tourists to do, and anybody who wants to just get a different sort of experience, get to Caixa de Sodre, and like you're at the ferry port there, and you can go to all sorts of places from there, can't you? As you, as you discovered here, I didn't realise you could do that at Porto Brando when I when I've been on the way to Trafari. It's, it's, it's the, the last boat I have never done. I think I've done all the. Yeah, it's what's great about Lisbon—you have this kind of makes you really feel like you're kind of in an exotic location with all these great ferries. Again, you can use your magic card for all these, Navigante card. You can go to this place called Seychelles, Montijo, Barrero. You can go to uh, Casillas, and you can Porto Ponto and Trafaria. It's like six different locations just by this little ferry. And you can yeah. go over. You can just Sometimes you can just cross the river and um, have a seafood meal and then head back over the river for sunset. It's amazing, mate. Nice. What are we looking at here? Life. This is a, a house made of people's bones. This is a little bit further. This is probably the longest one I've done in terms of not in terms of time, but in terms of um, distance. Uh, but it was only an hour and a half, um, and I just wanted to include it because it's a bit different. Um, yeah. It's Italian, just uh, just touching edge of uh, Alentejo, so it's only an hour and a half on the train. It's not far, um, but it's uh, this is uh, it, uh, a town called Evera. It's got a very famous Roman town. You get a lot of people going there, and but this church was amazing because it's um, it's made of bones. You know, it's a pretty <laughs> creepy thing. It really makes you kind of, you know, <laughs> think about life and death. And and I, I did actually just skydive that later that day. Um, and I just thought, it really, maybe wonder if I, that was going to be the end of me, and I was going to be one of those skulls very soon. But um, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't want to be seeing skulls before I jump out of the plane. And I look quite happy here, but you know, I, I really what was very you- nervous. <laughs> Are you saying that that should have been a brown uniform? It might might have been a bit more appropriate. Honestly, I've never been so scared in my life. And so I don't really get scared of things, but that was the most terrifying thing I've ever done in my what life. Was I, was, I was sweaty yeah. palms. It was disgusting. Did you, did you know you were going to do it, or did you just choose to do it on the day? Yeah, it was just my friend here on the right, Abdullah. It was his birthday, so I had to kind of pretend I really wanted to do it. Um, wow. And all day, and we went to this boat church made of bones, and, you know, and, uh, and I thought, like, oh, that's going to be me. But, you know. It's all part of the experience, but that was one of the longer trips we did. Um, but again, it just shows you we haven't really done, haven't done that many of, for the page yet. But like I said, the page is still quite in its infancy. But the idea is probably to do more of those more of those uh, trips that you can you can do in like an hour, an hour and a half, a little bit further, even kind of touching the Alentejo region. It's not really very far, and it's very easy to do in a day. I've done that a couple of times to Evera. Um, well, that's amazing because I, I thought you were just in and around uh, Lisboa, so that's really incredible. Usually to... is, um, but of course, there's always exceptions as well. Another one's a good example of that is like Nazare, which is you know, the, the town really of famous course. for the waves in the north, yeah, yeah. biggest yeah. wave surfed in the in the world. Um, and that's again, that's not far as an hour, an hour and a bit, um, a bit outside the region, but super easy to get to. Super incredible. Easy. And then you have to upgrade a little bit on your travel card, presumably for those longer trips. For those, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I've had more and more people kind of ask me about the travel card of kind of what things included. So I am thinking maybe for future posts, I'll I'll put a little Navigante card, friendly or not friendly. I might yeah. add that depending on the demand. Oh, um, well, you're doing a great job anyway. I, but be, um, the reason I'm dwelling on this is because I do want to know a little bit more about this skydive. I mean, and, you know, if, do, you, for do you want me to talk through this yeah. terrifying experience? Because yeah, I do. Because you went up in an aircraft like the one behind you, yeah. 
Yeah, I think I just did it for the story, to be honest, just so I could tell people of this on podcasts. Because yeah. honestly, it's uh, it was yeah, it's. I mean, I can tell the story because it's, I've told it many times. Yeah. Uh, very ana- uh, and in a way, very animated way because it just really brings back, evokes real memories of that terrifying day, my friend's birthday. So no, we went. Um, we gave us a little bit of training, and then you go into this little plane here. You know when you, you you're in a big Boeing plane or just even like a commercial airplane, and you and you you're kind of very aware you're in the air sometimes, and you look outside, you go, oh god, this is quite terrifying that I'm in a plane. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get so used to it, but you're like, but then imagine that plane being tiny and being and 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 not having seats and having the wall being stuck together with tape and like kind of coming off and you're thinking, mm, I'm not sure. Lord and then they're making this sound like duk, 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 and you can literally just feel it go like this, like completely like almost 90 degrees up. And you're just like duk, 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 and is, it, is it gonna go? And then you go above the clouds and it's just you can feel the air getting colder because there's no insulation. And then this guy behind you, you do a, they do a tandem with you. Obviously, it's your first one. And they put just link chains behind you. like. And I just keep saying, I'm like to Joao, whatever his name was. I was saying, Joao, are these, are these chains, are they are they linked hard enough to my back? Are they are they safe? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's done like 10,000 jumps or something. Yeah. And then he, I, and I was just like, oh, God, it's terrifying. And I was the first one out the door. Or the, the door. They opened the door. And you kind of you put your, you go on your knees just on the edge of the plane literally looking out off the out of the window like on your knees <laughs> and then you just they just push you out and yeah. you just grit your teeth for the whole time and then and the and this joao guy is saying oh but you're flying put your hands out it feels like you're flying i'm like joao i'm not i'm not flying i'm falling to my death and if yeah. you don't pull that parachute oh, i'm dead don't <laughs> trick me i'm not that's not flight that's falling to my death so yeah, yeah that was um but anyway i survived as you can tell so um that was me afterwards uh, did you feel a million dollars after that? Oh man, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I bet. lived yeah. every day after that, you know. Yes, yes, I imagine it does, does the sort of change your worldview. But my hands were really like uh, on the plane. I was just, uh, it was. I've never, I, like I said, I don't really get scared. I'm a person who gets scared of anything, but I really don't get that scared of that many things. And like, I, I could re- remember looking at my hands, and it was just like swimming pools. Just <laughs> like absolutely, I was like, does my hands do that? I get that nervous. I didn't realize you could get that nervous, but it, uh, it, can. It, uh, and I would it, never do it again. But this guy I went with did, did it 10,000 times. I mean, imagine jumping up the plane 10,000 times. So. They're amazing, those people, aren't they? I mean, that's that's adrenaline in front of your eyes that was gathering on your palms there, I think. Incredible oh, experience. As all part yeah. of this wonderful thing you do. In case you're wondering, in case you've just joined us, Julian Sorensen is here from Lisboa Car Free. How to enjoy, well, not just Lisbon, I think, but you know the, the, the wider area around Lisbon. And, and quite a lot of Portugal, by the sound of it, um, on public transport and having a great time. Skydive is optional. You don't have to do that in case you no. were wondering about Added that. Added cost, not included on the, the Navigante card. But you don't insist your subscribers do it either, right? Definitely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. I wouldn't even recommend it to anybody. But everyone loves it. It's one of those things that I think when you do it, everyone says, "Yeah, oh, they come out, oh, you're, you're, like the, you'll love it and you'll be telling them how much you love it. And I was not one of those people. Okay, well, there I, we go. I realize I'm scared of heights. I didn't realize that before. So, like, yeah, we yeah, maybe should have checked. Yeah. I mean, well done, well done, Julian. I think it's amazing. Thanks. You're my hero. Uh, well, I eat at my uncle's place, says Anna Lucia. We were talking before. You wanted oh, to go. He, oh, I see. He doesn't have a restaurant. You just eat at his house. So, can Julian just go and knock on the door? Uh, but there is the value the rest of the thing, That's around the corner for me. It's very close. Yeah, I know the restaurant. Okay, but in Lisbon, one of my. One of my family and favorites is the Veranda Valley for Mozo. Great food, great service there on Facebook. Uh, don't tell anyone except me. You must get that quite a lot, Julian, I'm guessing. Uh, Carmen, good evening to you. Um, people want a bit of an exclusive because that's the, you know, this is the funny thing, isn't it, about well kept secrets? That's is it, it. They don't stay that way, do they? It's a fine balance, isn't it? You want to tell people and you want to kind of share the love for the city that you love and the area that you love, but at the same time, the more you do that, the more the more you might, might expose it. At the moment, it's not too bad, but um, yeah. that's the church, exactly. Yeah, so um, that's Ella de Zosos, uh, in Evora, the Chapel of Bones, Anna Lutia is telling She's a really good source of information, and she always corrects us with our pronunciation of Portuguese. How's your Portuguese going? No, oh, let's not let's not go down that that alley. Um, you as well, eh? I think I'm just I'm just um, it's just not one of my. I've tried very hard. It's not a, I feel like a trying, but I think it's just not one of my natural talents. I've got 
I'm good at a lot of things, but that's definitely not one of those things. Language, I, I can, I can, I can write to people, I can WhatsApp people, what have you, but it's um, and read, but it's um, but it's and speak some, but listening is just don't understand what anyone's saying. That's a problem. It, it, that that, it, but you're not alone with that. Because... I always feel like I am. People always say listening, especially like non-Anglo people, because they speak other languages. I mean, I can speak a bit of Danish, but um, they. Um, non-anglo people they kind of they they well maybe english people say that as well but they say they kind of the first thing that that comes to that you that that you get is listening you always start understanding first and then eventually you can you can speak but for me i'm like i, I mean i watch a lot of football games and that kind of thing I just watch one now and i was like i've literally no idea what they're saying if they had subtitles i would i oh if people had subtitles i was speaking to on the street and i'd be like mm, i kind of understand what you're saying it's an idea. People don't come with subtitles, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. I'm, anyway. I'm sure. It's, I'm sure Google are working on that. Yeah, oh, I mean, I really, I'd be up for that. I know it's a bit kind of uh, futuristic, but I'd be up for that. I'd pay good money for that for sure. Well, uh, but it's an interesting point you make because I think. Oh, actually, before I go into that, do ask Julian questions now. If there was something that you saw uh, on his Instagram feed, there the goat or whatever it was um and you want to know more i'll just do a bit of a scroll oh, i actually need to put it back on the screen first don't I? i'll just do a little bit of a scroll uh while i'm talking to you about portuguese not a, it's not something i know a lot about but somebody did some say to me um it, it's difficult and you know and she said the portuguese are always hungry and that's why they eat all their words as well and it, this to me <laughs> makes a lot of sense yeah. the first bit it, it you know it comes from nowhere and you might be able to make out a little bit in the middle and then the end disappears as well. And, and, and the words do get eaten. And I, I listen to radio to try and, you know, to, to develop my Portuguese. And I really see this, that I can hear the middle of the sentence sometimes, make a little bit out. But they kind of run into the sentence and then run off again at the end. How, so, is, your, how is your Portuguese, Carl? Can you, can you speak it? No, no. I, 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 you know, probably like <laughs> you, I, yeah. I, can, I can find myself in a, I can get out of a situation. The, the most yeah. difficult thing that happened to me the other day um, was when someone phoned me up delivering um, an, uh, an Amazon parcel. And um, th there was a, the lady was on the other end of the phone. I, I gathered that she was outside my house. She was hooting the horn. My, my wife wasn't hearing it. And there was a really awkward moment where I'm, I don't know what to say to her. She doesn't know what to say to me. And then what do we do? One of us has to put the phone down on the other one because we haven't got anything else to say. And, and I found that really kind of rude yeah, and awkward. But the turn out the, the wonderful end of the story was that I said I tr did a like, like you maybe did a very a quick Google translate. I'm in this cafe if you're passing and sent her my location. And, it, and five minutes later, there she is in the doorway. My phone rings because she's there and, and she's got this parcel in her hand standing in the doorway of my local cafe that to me is one another yet another great aspect of the beauty of portuguese living it was really wonderful that's awesome yeah 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 a question for you julian are the tableside barbecue restaurants common around portugal or is that a speciality of that specific cafe well uh, come around portugal um, i don't know i mean potentially but i don't i don't think so because um this uh, i've i've not seen it anywhere not in the the lisbon region anyway um it's um it's something they really advertise in the village like they and they they really push on you when you when you sit down um and this is what some i think a, a hotel owner actually messaged me um, Portuguese hotel owner messaged me on on Instagram suggesting I should go there because it's quite unique. So I, I really don't think it's quite a unique thing. Um, the, the 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 barbecue, as you know, I'm sure the charcoal, charcoal grilling is very common in Portuguese cuisine. But having it there and being able to do it all yourself on the table, I think it's pretty. That could be unique, yeah, especially in the region, yeah. It's it's a very okay. special thing. Um, it's it's it, the, it's that that's kind of what the whole thing is around. It, it is quite a special thing. Yeah, I, I I'm going to do that. And and you must be adding so many new things to people's lists. You know, I make this joke on, on oh, the that's the idea. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, the, the list gets longer and longer in Portugal, doesn't it? It's and like the more you look, honestly, it just becomes like, for me as well, doing this page and every weekend, like my friends and my girlfriend or both, just uh, looking at looking at places. And then you kind of, uh, sometimes you just want to find the really crazy places. So you just go into Google Maps. You're like, oh, where's that good link? Oh, that looks cool. And then you just, oh, my God. And then you've got like 10 place, new places to go to. And um, it's super exciting. And especially when you can get there by, by public transport. And even if it's a little bit further out of the way and not many, that many people have been there, it suggests that it's a kind of a more exciting place to go. So you kind of go, go that little bit extra to, to find the place. Yeah, I, 
this is so like yeah yeah for sure i totally understand like being that. an explorer you know it's, uh, it's cool uh, you, well, you are keeping the spirit spirit of Phileas Fogg alive, I think, with the, how you're what it was. Yeah, hopefully. No, seriously, because you you know, t- travel has got and tourism's got a bit lazy, isn't it? You know, people uh, have got very used to convenience. You know, the Airbnb thing. It's it's all very convenient, and I understand why that is. It takes a lot of the stress and the hassle out. But in a, in a way, we've kind of got rid of the baby with the bathwater of travel, haven't we? Is a lot of the edginess <laughs> gets sort of sanitized out of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I I've kind of done a fair whack of travel, and um, I I and then you probably have as well. It's um, I completely agree with you. It's you you want that adventure. You want the kind of the unknown. Uh, I think when I go traveling outside Portugal, I go to places like Belarus and places like that because it's the kind of crazy places I don't really know anyone has ever been to, and it's kind of the same thing because by extension in um, in, uh, in in Portugal and Lisbon area, you want to go to places you haven't people haven't been to, not just because you want to say you've been there. Or because it's just because it's you know it's it's not known. It's also just because it's exciting because you just don't know what to expect for good exactly. or the for the good or for the bad. It might be like you don't know what's going to be there. It could be dinosaurs. Yeah. I don't know. Yes, you know? In, yeah, and there are places with dinosaurs in Portugal. Yeah, I haven't been there yet, but I'm going to go to that part. This this has attracted my eye not just because there's booze on the table. Mm, but a lovely I, place. Is it? Well, tell us That's more about Moscatel. That's Moscatel on the table. So if people. Live in Portugal, love Portugal. I'm sure you know Moscatel. Yeah. Um, delightful kind of wine, fortified ish wine from Setubu and uh, and Douro region as well. But Setubu in this case, um, it's the kind of the, the Bacalhoa uh, vineyard um, is based here. You might have seen the, that yes, wine labels, yeah. super famous. And um, they've got a couple of uh, wineries, but this is in a place called Aze Tau, which is a really amazing town. And I, I think it's well known amongst Portuguese, but and it's you can easily get there by bus from from lisbon direct from Praça de España, i think it is um direct bus super easy to get to and it's just like kind of a, almost a resort spa town you've got this they've got their own cheese like this kind of classic portuguese cheese that kind of melts when you you kind of um when, when you stir it around you can put it on bread with like some serrano ham or what have you and it's really known for for its uh the, its different just uh, uh wineries so you can go and then do t- moscatel tasting in this case that picture was um from a moscatel tasting and they just give you all these different types you can try those great amazing ones there's the cheese as well it's just yeah. a really great day out if you just want to kind of really live the good life you know which of course a lot of people in portugal for let's be honest wine and Wine and cheese, and um, and this place is amazing. It's kind of exactly where it's made, produced. You get so much locally sourced stuff right on the right, uh, right where it's um, right where it's made. You know, you you can eat it. Um, and uh, as it's out, if you're not if you're not been there, highly have, recommend that place. This yeah, is what yeah. I want to say to you. I, I I stumbled across it, albeit in the car, uh, traveling with three kids under ten. It's quite a posh all, town, all, actually. Quite nice. it. Isn't yeah. it a posh town? It's yeah. fantastic. Thing. You we get got, a lot of those kind of times out of nowhere. It's just like kind of you get the, the azaleas, just the, the classic tiles, but yeah. it's just very like I don't know, kind of almost grand. I always it's kind of it's got it's uh, beautiful. But that's, this this yeah. is what I want to say to you. I think you've got an incredible nose for this as well because I like to think I, I discover places. And my son is 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 sort of developing that. He can spot a good restaurant and bar these days, and he's only eight. And I'm thinking to myself, you've got any, I mean, how does, how have you developed this? Is it, is it sort of partly risk taking? Is it based on your touristic experience? But you've, you've clearly got a, a really good nose for this as well. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, I'm always, I guess, a person kind of inquisitive by nature. I'm always asking either uh, local people kind of about their favorite places, always looking at maps. I mean, I did like, uh, I, was, I was a geographer by by nature, by university, and what have you. So I'm always looking at maps and looking to find different places. And just to think, just at the end of the day, I just love travel. And um, I think people, when they think about travel, they always think about traveling to another country, I mean, which I love doing, but or around the world or to another city. But uh, there's never never stop traveling, never stop traveling your day to day and your weekends. It's uh, you can travel extensively around your own region. I mean, obviously, I've got a great region. I mean, put my <laughs> hands up. I mean, but even then, I mean, where I used to live in Berlin before, it's something similar. Um, and you just you just explore your own region. There's so many places to, and you can really get off the beaten track. The more and more you kind of you delve into it, and um, sometimes you get some red herrings, right? You kind of like yeah. oh, red herring. You get some duffs, duds. Yeah, but. Um, they don't Most make it. Kind of great, right? and if it's a dud, it's kind of funny anyway. Yes, in this random Portuguese town, no one knows who you are. They're like, "Why is this person taking photos?" That um, might and it's kind of funny. 
you know could that be villa franca maybe that will that was just my experience of it but that was yeah yeah <laughs> I, post, I posted that actually. i have got a post for that but but yeah. it's not the best one it's an old one um but things with with Villa Frank is a good example actually. It's you kind of it's, it's a town just up the estuary. You take a direct train there from Santa Polonia Station, in Lisbon, and it's um and it's just a kind of town that people commute from. But at the same time, it's got this kind of old classic, quite iconic, so to speak, bridge. Um, and it's also got a really uh, what I've discovered when I went there. One of the discoveries is got a really modern art gallery there. So it's quite really? big local um, or national artist. Um, have some works there, yeah, and that's when I was just walking around and just saw this huge modern gallery. And I, in yeah. every one of these posts, I always sort of put another thing I try to put is a hot tip, which yeah. is kind of like a, a thing that you should know that uh, what you should try when you're there that you might not have noticed. And that for that one, it's the art gallery, and I've I've uh, I've tagged the Instagram there so you can find it easily as well. Um, well that, but even like those small places, you know, you find like a modern art gallery, like hilarious. So that is very Portuguese. I have to say that it's very understated and there's treasure around every corner. So again, we were lucky to have such a wonderful resource. The reason I was dwelling on this picture here is because, you know, you said you get off the beaten track. You could be in Bali there, couldn't you? This, this, this what yeah, you look at that. Look at those distant mountains. And but that's the Arabada mountains. And we try to oh, do more and more walks in those regions recently because, and it kind of, uh, it's um, kind of similar to the Mafra mountains. It's kind of like, it's, you kind of, you've got, you've got like, it's, it's really wild. Once you kind of going to go off into those, people don't walk them that much. Um, I did a walk in Arabada recently, and um, I mean, you've got you've got some real wild nature there, and, and you just walk off a few minutes, and you're not going to see anybody. Arabada yeah, is amazing. amazing. All right, a couple more questions. In fact, it was a, a James. I often say this, but it, it, it's a, a good fun fact that a James Bond scene on Her Majesty's Secret Service was filmed in the Arabada National Park. There. Oh, really? Um, yeah, absolutely. Look it up. <laughs> You're, you're, I'm sure you've got plenty of uh, research to do That's anyway. That's a great fact. I like do that. You, do you, yeah, you could go there. Do you share the prices of your adventures, meals, tasting, etc.? I think you do, don't you? Go into some detail. Uh, yeah, sometimes. I, I, on the actual posts, I haven't. Um, on Instagram, you get the option of stories as well, so like the kind of the 24-hour posts. Um, I do that there. Um, I try not to always put prices in there, Carmen, just because it can change as well. So yeah. I don't want to like post something and then someone loses reads it three years later and they're like, um, actually, <laughs> that's not correct. It's not it's before it's the good. price. So it's I I try um, and but you I try to get a lot of direct messages people asking uh, and then of course I can I can help them with that with that. I always try to take pictures of menus and that kind of thing like I did with that restaurant yesterday. Wow. Um, and it needs that resource, but try not to put too many numbers in there because they can change. Okay, fair enough. Um, and she yep. says, yes, Julian, you definitely have a gift for this. I Thank agree. Um, so as we conclude then, um, Instagram is the main way of consuming your service, is it? Or do yeah, you have a I mean, again, I've had got a couple of requests, people saying, oh, if you had a Facebook page, I'd be up for that as well. And, and maybe in the, in the future or near future, I'll do that. But at the moment, I kind of want to put it all into uh, the energy in one thing and then see how yeah. it goes. But I think Instagram's kind of the I'm a big fan of Facebook, but I think it's kind of the way that things are a lot of going, especially when you're sharing photos yep. and um, and sharing what have you experiences. It's the way to go at the moment. But I think I'll probably expand to other platforms if, you know, things go 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 well. Well, that's my next question and probably final question, and unless anyone else has some other questions coming in via the comments. But um, sorry to make it sound like a job interview, but where do you see this in five years' time? Mm, well, good one because it's only been five months, but or less than five months. But it's amazing what you've done in that short space of time. But yeah, where, where, yeah. how would you like to see this go? Yeah, uh, well, there's just, there's a lot of ways you can go. I, I don't have. Um, I think that, like you were mentioning with kind of environmental groups and governmental organisations, um, you've got so many different uh, ways you can go with it. Whether that be for tourists, whether that be for locals, whether that be for kind of initiating green initiatives in the city, whether that be uh, providing great information for people who are coming to visit the city um you can it's, there'll be a lot of partner partnerships and collaborations with different organizations and mm -hmm. um and then maybe even uh, like a lot of people have not a lot of people but some people have um requested like maybe doing tours in the future as well and uh, expanding out that way as well but i think it's like, like everything is feeling it out feel it out don't have too much of a rigid plan have a, a, a basic skeleton of where you want it to go and and then kind of play it by ear well, I, I would love to work with you more. I've so enjoyed tonight. And, yeah, and me I, too. It's gone. It's I, an hour already. It's amazing. Isn't it? um, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, e e even if we lost a few people there, I, I, this just your passion 
And th what you've shared with us has been in incredible um, tonight. So I've really loved it. And, and you know, that's the, we have tested people's attention spans and they've stayed with us, I think, which is wonderful oh, um, because, because of the quality of what you're providing. And, yeah, I'd love to work with you on, on expatsportugal.com. I think your tours, your, you know, your, your passion and love for Portugal is, is evident and obvious and you're doing... Oh, well, yeah, I know. I mean... Yeah, and well, yeah, of course, absolutely, Carl. I, I would like that too. We're getting a fabulous uh, from Carmen there, who's enjoyed the show tonight. So, thank you so much. I'm going to stick around for a little while, but I'll let you go now and hope that we okay. can speak again whenever you've got new things or you know developments you want to share. You, you, you are you consider yourself uh, one of the community here now. Thank you very much, guys, and thanks, Carl. I'll see um, you soon. Yeah, take great care. Have uh, happy traveling. Cheers, guys. All right, bye for now. Um, that's so wonderful. Julian Sorensen there. The Instagram is, let me go back to um, give you that uh, Instagram, forward slash Lisboa, the Portuguese spelling Lisboa, underscore car free. What an amazing service. What a lovely conversation uh, we've had tonight. It's not, you know, like I said at the beginning, it, it's, you know, he, it, he makes this whole thing of not having a car look really <laughs> attractive. For some people, it's their worst nightmare, isn't it? No way, I'm not giving up my car. And there's Julian and his pals, girlfriend, friends going out um, with the amazing public transport system, to be fair, you know, of, of Portugal and Lisbon. Um, that is such good value and, and so well served, well serviced. Um, it, he makes it so, so exciting and brilliant. Just look at those photographs. Um, it's it's incredible. So um, my great thanks to him. I want to go back to a question that uh, Eugene asked earlier on about hire in central Portugal. Uh, that was the question. How easy is it to access car hire when you're further inland? Any recommendations? Um, yeah, Julian basically touched on it there, Eugene. Uh, and what I do, I, I consider myself to be in central Portugal. Um, what I do is hire a car. F I, I have hired cars locally and it's pretty expensive. And I think the local car hire companies deal a lot with, you know, they're the higher, higher price end and they're dealing with insurance companies. So, you know, it's the full tariff. What you need to do, in my view, my personal recommendation or my personal experience is to hire where the tourists are. So hire at... Uh, Lisbon or Faro or Porto, where there's an absolute price war on on car hire for incoming tourists. I use a company called Zest, and uh, send me a PM and I can, I can connect you with them. But I use Zest, and then the company they're a broker basically, and the company, my favourite company that Zest will lead you to, a company called Rent Auto. Got one of their cars at the moment, and I, I found dealing with them for the last two years, I think. Great. They, you know how car hire can be really stressful. You know when you arrive at some of those bigger car hire places, and they're saying, "Do you know that if you have a scratch on the car, it might cost you two million euros?" That's why you need to buy our such and such insurance, which will only cost you five hundred euros for three days. And you get into all of that. You've just arrived, and you're maybe a little bit stressed, or you're jet lagged, or whatever. You've been travelling a long time, and you can't think straight. You don't need all that hassle. So Rent Auto are so cool. Zest are really helpful as well. So that's the combo I would recommend. And, yeah, to give you an idea, the vehicle I've got at the moment, this is off-season, to be fair. Um, you know, the, the, the highest prices are behind us now. I don't tend to hire at the higher the season. But I've got a car at the moment, and it's costing me less than uh, 10 euros a day to have a brand-new car for the time that we use it. And uh, the family's getting used to it. We live on the, on the edge of a town where we can walk and do most of the things we want to do. We can get on the train. We live on the wonderful Linea de Nord, the Northern Line, and uh, that takes us to Aveiro and Coimbra. And then every now and then we hire a brand new car via Zest and Rent Auto. And that works for me. So PM me, Eugene. We're in touch anyway, aren't we? If you want to know more about doing that, that is what I would suggest you do. It does mean, of course, making the journey to either uh, the uh, capital or Porto. Probably the best deals are in the capital. But as we've just found out tonight, the journey, you know, factor that in. Enjoy the journey. That's what I did last time when I went to pick up my last hire car. Uh, did a little bit of business in Portugal, met up uh, in, in Lisbon, I mean, met up with a pal, enjoyed the, the train ride. Did the morning show from the train, in fact. So I made the most of it. So that would be my recommendation. As we come up to our hour long uh, show tonight, the Portugal show, join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Tuesday, didn't do that in the right order. I'm getting the hang of that. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, and tomorrow night, it will be Portugal Positive News with Donna Jacqueline, the very popular expat elder 
who's here to give us a few comforting words of wisdom in these bonkers times. Uh, she'll be here tomorrow from 10 o'clock. Looking forward to being with her again. And touching on a little bit of news from around the country and even the world of a positive, uplifting and inspiring nature. I think we need that at the moment. Thank you for being with us tonight. This has been The Portugal Show with me, Carl Munson, of expatsportugal.com. Do go and sign up there. You can sign up free at expatsportugal.com and you can get premium membership, which will give you a stack of benefits and discounts of professional services, the sort of thing you need when you are thinking of a new life in Portugal, migration and, and such things, taxation advice and all that sort of malarkey. Go to expatsportugal.com and sign up there. Take care. Bye for now. And we'll see you in the morning for Tuesday's Good Morning Portugal show. Take care. Bye for now. Bye night.